we are looking at uh, exchange between the uh, sediment water. So, the uh, mechanisms of release uh, what we had uh, talked about is one is by uh, diffusion. So, it is diffusion inside the sediment plus uh, convective mass transfer. at the interface. The second thing uh, that we talked about is resuspension, this is where uh, material can get resuspended, so solid particles will get into the air and in, into the water. And this entire cloud of uh, suspended particles will go downstream. When this cloud of particles goes downstream, it can uh, resuspension, several things happen. The uh, contaminated, uh, contaminated solids are suspended into water and uh, while they are there, the desorption of chemical from the water occurs. Then this particle also settles. back so there is a sudden gust of energy uh, it picks up material goes into the so this thing so you will see this uh, turbidity of this uh, turbidity or the tss all increases in the water and then it goes downstream if it is in a lake it will just sit like that uh, the system is different water quality is modeled differently as, as we have discussed before. And so then it will also resuspend and uh, it will also deposit back into this thing. So, in order to estimate the, uh, the effect of this, this uh, one needs to estimate what is the resuspension that is happening, how much of resuspension happens. So, that is not in the core purview of this course, what that, that, uh, that needs uh, that is more of sediment transport, sediment uh, hydrology. So, the depends on the energy that is uh, what is called as the process is called as scouring, S-C-O-U-R. The resuspension is also uh, is called as scouring. So, it is an energy intensive process. So, it and naturally occurs during storms and high flow, high velocities and uh, So, during resuspension one can estimate, uh, it is a complicated process, but very simply one can estimate it based on the loading of the sediment and the TSS. So, if you want say in a given uh, volume of water, this is the volume of water multiplied by the suspended solids concentration, right. This will give you L cube by M of A by L cube multiplied by W A 3 will give you, oh, sorry, this is M3, M3 by 1, multiplied by WA3, this is MA by M3. This will give you the amount of chemical that is now entered the water, but it is now bound to the solid, yeah. So, I can say that the effective concentration of this water, the effective concentration of this water if I take this M A and multiply M A divided by the, the volume of water, this becomes the effective concentration of A in the water. So, we know that it is the combination of both the aqueous phase and the solid phase, but still it is water itself if you take a sample and extract it, you will say this concentration is very high, okay. This is something that we uh, looked at during partitioning that study where you have a small amount of organic carbon suspended, but the free aqueous phase concentration is smaller. But if I take this entire water sample and extract, I will get the combination of material chemical that is attached to the water as well as on the solid. So, uh, this is what will happen. So, this is this this is the 
impairment of water quality due to resuspension. Okay. So, yesterday we also mentioned that the composition, the fraction of solids that uh, have okay, organic contaminant is a lower fraction which tends to stay in the water for a longer period of time. So, it also tends to uh, do spoil the water quality over a period of time. The other consequence to this is once a particle is suspended, it can desorb, it can transfer from the solid phase to the liquid phase. If it comes to the liquid phase, it can also go to the atmosphere. So, this example of this is uh, what we consider during our uh, partitioning example. So, this is now how it can happen in the scenario real. real. There is a third mechanism by which chemical can get into the uh, water okay? and this is what is called as not a very well known process what is called as bioturbation. Okay. So, bioturbation is uh, as you are as the name suggests bioturbation is this is sediment is say, is the transport caused by biological agent. This transport of chemicals in the sediment due to biological uh, agents. What do you mean by biological agents? Biological agents can be anything that is living on the surface of the sediments. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the in different systems say in coastal uh, in, in ocean sea systems, say salt water systems, fresh water systems this is and or lake systems fresh water and surface water which is both fresh water, salt water and uh, uh, and, and this kind of different systems, you have a large amount of biological life that resides on the surface of the of the water. So, what are these biological agents? This can be worms, predominantly a lot of worms, lot of worms. Like if you go and go and look in soil, also you can see a lot of worms. There are earthworms, there are other kinds of worms. Okay, and there are larger creatures in the in the system in river water. There are larger creatures also, which, which things like crabs and other things which crawl on the surface of the water. right? And uh, if you look at the sediment structure, the top layer of the sediment is, is fairly fluffy, it is not consolidated, it is loose. If you go deeper, it is more consolidated. Soil is very consolidated, soil where soil has no moisture content is very small. So, it, it consolidates, it shrinks and it becomes like a hard mass. You cannot you can't you can't put a spoon in soil, but you can take a, a stick and spoon in sediment. You can take out material. It's like a jelly. Okay, so other uh, larger organisms like like crabs, etc. So what do they do? The action of uh, bioturbation itself. That's different things. So people have observed this action about how does this affect chemical transport in the top layer. So why are we talking about this? Because in the absence of resuspension, diffusion is the only way in which chemical can go up. So if anything that can that can increase, enhance this transport. Okay. How does the bioturbation is seen as enhancing? So one of the one of the the bioturbators or is worms. These worms are creatures that that are say as from a few millimeters to a few centimeters in th thickness. They, are, they exist different types of worms, the classification is, uh, is there in if you look at sediment and water literature, biology, biological life in sediments then you will see a lot of variety of worms. So, these worms they feed in the sediment head down okay, and they feed and they process the material and they ingest it out to the back. What they do is they are feeding at the sediment, the sediment is sent in and the chemical goes in. There could be transformation that is happening in the process, but if this transformation does not happen, what it is doing is it is essentially taking it and conveying it through the body and coming out, ingesting here. So, a lot of times you will notice this is uh, fecal matter of the worms. It contains organic matter and it also contains a lot of 
whatever is the chemical that is sitting here, so this is the chemical that is uh, picked up from this region. So, this can be a few centimeters depending on the height of the one. What it is doing is it is serving as a mechanism which does circumvents the diffusion process and directly goes out. So, the processing time of the worm is much faster than the diffusion rate of diffusion that happens that is one one mechanism okay the second mechanism is this worm goes in and comes out so it burrows and then comes out so there is a there's a possibility that what what will happen is if i take sediment and i put a large number of worms in the surface soon you will see that uh, if I take a sediment that looks like this and I put a lot of worms into it, very soon what you will see is this, this worms now this, this become a big mound, okay. This, this top region becomes a big mound. What it does is it goes in and it reworks the sediment. When it reworks the sediment, the property of this, the epsilon, the porosity of this we will call it as epsilon bio, the epsilon bio, the epsilon 2 bio is much larger than the epsilon 2 because it worked it up. Basically, it is equivalent to somebody going and stamping the entire place and disturbing it, okay. But they are working through it. So, they are, they are reconsolidating, unconsolidating the sediment, so making it fluffy so that from a transport point of view, if you apply your diffusion equation through this, this layer contains uh, a much higher porosity. Therefore, the, the resistance, the effective diffusivity of this region, so the effective diffusivity of this region is larger than the effective DA3 bio. This is another mechanism. The third mechanism is the worm will come in, burrow down and leave. So, it leaves a tube. You will see this very commonly in sediments. If you are, I do not know how many of you will have the opportunity to see it. In sediments you will see that sometimes you will see holes in sediments. These holes can be as deep, very deep okay. Because the sediment is consolidated, you can take a mud and then put a stick through it and take it out. Sometimes it will stay as it is intact. It will not collapse, fall in. We will take sand and do that, it will, sand will collapse in. But sediment is very cohesive. There is a lot of clay in it. Uh, so, it will stick there. It, if you make a hole in it, it will stay there. Yeah. It is like, if it, for example, you take clay and I poke a hole in it, it stays, the hole stays, it does not collapse back. So, it is very cohesive sediment. What does this do? This is again equivalent to increasing the porosity in a given region, that is one. Second is, this one is filled with water. This is no, there is no solid in this. So, it offers a nice pathway for material to transport. So, again here, the diffusion coefficient of uh, this of bio here is again larger than the diffusion coefficient of a non biotubated system. So, these all these mechanisms are responsible for uh, enhanced transport of chemical in a biotope in a system that has biological life living in it, right. So, now what has happened is if you want to model, you apply our previous model to this. Our previous model was a very simple system. We have this is our domain, this contamination, this is sediment here, and there is water. We are now simply looking at uh, all of this entire region has uh, same properties. So, we are, we are looking at dou A2 by uh, dou T equals dA32 RA32 dou square dou A2 by dou Z square. We are applying this model throughout for z equals 0 onwards to z equals to infinity wherever we are going. Now, what has happened is there is a layer, there is a layer that is sitting here which is a biotope, there is a bio layer which does not have the same properties as your rest of the sediment. So, this layer is, is again follows the same equation, the same equation, but this layer does not have the same properties which means that uh, rho A2 by dou T equals this dA3 2 is dA3 2 bio by RA3 2 bio 
into dou square rho a 2 by dou z square. It has different properties, it has different retardation factor, it has different diffusion coefficients because of this layer and there is a certain length. So, now the boundary condition will be you cannot write this boundary, the boundary condition we wrote like this. In, now, the boundary conditions have to be written uh, for at the, the interface between the bio layer and the water. This is the, this is the interface z equals to 0 is here and this is z equal to some z 1. Yeah. So, the boundary conditions will be corresponding boundary conditions. This bio enters here. The boundary condition here is the bio term that enters here, not the regular one. At z equals to z1, this is the other boundary condition. There is one intermediate boundary condition now because there is two layers. There is one layer here and one layer here. Both sides diffusion is occurring. There is diffusion, there is diffusion occurring from There is diffusion occurring here and there is diffusion occurring here also across this two bio layer and this. It will be simply uh, minus of d a 3 2 bio d rho a 2 by dou z at z equals to z 1 equals minus of d a 3 2 at z equals to z 1 plus and minus yeah. Yeah. It's controlled by that. That, that is a different issue. So we are the when you are modeling it, it is so eventually when you solve the equation, it will turn out to be like that because it will take time for material to come into the top layer. So eventually the overall rate will be controlled by what how it is coming from below. But whatever comes uh, here will go faster. So there is if you take two thicknesses of sediments, okay, but the top layer, this contaminant already present in the top layer, in a system which is undisturbed by bio or a system which is disturbed by bio, this top layer, this is much more fluffier, which means transport from that layer is faster than transport from this layer. That is why the bioturbation may be larger, may contribute to higher uh, this thing. Once the contamination is gone from that bio layer, the below layer now is controlled by the diffusion. So, that is the reason when, when we use both this boundary conditions, the boundary condition we used last time and the, this one, uh, but the two boundary conditions on surface where we say surface concentration is 0 and the surface concentration is a, a flux boundary conditions. Both of them at a very long time will become similar. The flux will be very high in the first one. So both of them will go to because at longer times it is controlled by more controlled by diffusion at this at the deep inside the sediment. Okay. So you are right. So once in the beginning this uh, flux is higher, likely to be higher. But this is also again as we had discussed throughout the uh, this the, this topic, it doesn't happen overnight. Even contamination of sediment takes a long time. While it's contaminating itself, microbes will start their work. And so the process of contamination itself will be influenced by by bioturbation. So it's a process that is of chemical going into the sediment also is controlled by it. Okay. So how do you uh, how do you how do people uh, measure this? So it's difficult for us to estimate uh, uh, the actual process and all that. So people try to measure the bio the uh, the.
D A 3 2 bio is measured We measured for a given this thing for a given layer of uh, bioturbation layer uh, either by laboratory experiments or make taking field measurements of fluxes. So, you, I, the, the way we do it is again we get a we use the model and we measure flux and we measure flux and then we use this uh, uh, these numbers we fit the experimental data of flux to these numbers. The advantage of a model is if you are parameterizing this transport process like this it, you can use the model to get the parameters because you have, you have set that diffusion based process. So, this D A 3 2 B bio is not purely molecular diffusion anymore it is some process which we it could be bunch of things ok. I do not even know it, it cannot call the feeding process as diffusion and all that. So, it is D bio so it is not it is diffusivity but it is not molecular diffusivity it is some other diffusivity ok. So, the magnitude of D bio is measured and then depending on the organism or the location of the site you can characterize whether it is faster or slower or it is the same order of magnitude as the uh, regular diffusion ok. The fourth mechanism there is a fourth mechanism which can also affect which is called as advection. Now, advection is bulk flow of material coming out very little advection opportunity for advection in sediments ok. Unlike soil sediments very little opportunity of advection soils have some possibilities of advection, but uh, sediments are very very this was already saturated there is it is already reached its static equilibrium and all that there is no way in which material can go up and down. The only reason it will go up and down is if, if there is another something else causing material to go up. So, a lot of times in sediments uh, as I had mentioned this before in one of the earlier classes there is anaerobic reactions that happen. So, if you look at the oxygen profile in the sediments there is water here. So, here oxygen is uh, 21 percent in the atmosphere in the dissolved in the water oxygen ranges from anywhere up to a maximum of about close to 10 milligrams per liter the concentration of oxygen in, in dissolved oxygen in water. You can imagine here oxygen has to diffuse further into sediment ok. So, the concentration of oxygen rapidly decreases into the, into the sediment. So, there is a region here where there is some amount of oxygen some amount of DO is present below this it is mostly no oxygen the anoxic. The anaerobic reactions can take place here bacteria that survive without oxygen can be present here ok and their anaerobic reactions can cause because there is organic matter there and then reactions can hap happen this is biological reactions going on. If there is also chemical sitting there that will also undergo biological reactions. Anaerobic reactions typically result in the formation of uh, things like methane CH4 can produce and if CH4 is produced where will it go? The gaseous phase reaction it will form a bubble and this bubble will rise up and break through and keep going through this. So, it is a very small process so you can imagine how much methane is produced by uh, this is not quantity is not very large, but what it can do is it can do what bioturbation is doing it can create a channel you can create one long channel and average you can say the process of methane generation is very slow, but you can calculate an average velocity of advection it can be very slow, but it can be faster than diffusion still. So, so when it is going up it can carry chemicals with it along with it ok. This is one within diffusion there is there are very minor uh, uh, things which people facilitated transport is DOC facilitated transport DOC is dissolved organic carbon. The thesis the hypothesis behind this mechanism is the following is a simple diffusion process, but what we are saying is this is a solid 
Now the organic carbon that is present attached to the solid phase, some of it may disengage, some of it may disengage. Why will it disengage? The reason it will disengage is for the same reason why there is anaerobic reaction. So, when there is oxygen depletion in the system, it can result in a other reactions that will change the pH, the, the, the oxidation reduction potential will change the as a result of this pH can change. When pH changes, this organic carbon, the colloids which are attached to the solid particles can disengage, then come, can release into water. If they release into water, into the pore water, they can travel by diffusion. Now, this is diffusion of colloids, this is colloids So, this is Brownian motion, colloids see when you look at there is a theory of particle diffusion where the diffusion uh, of molecules, they, they assume molecules are spheres which interact with each other like large particles or small particles sorry, very small particles and large molecules they are, they are come, they meet somewhere. So, this theory is coming from there is that colloids they, they would not settle down they are random motion size and diffusion theory is based on random motion. So, they are, they are the theory is that this colloids will travel up. What is the danger in this colloids travelling up? These are the ones which are carrying all your uh, chemical, the entire chemical is sitting piggybacking on the colloids. If the colloids are themselves moving, you do not have to worry about diffusion anymore, this colloid is itself moving up. So, it is facilitated transport, but this occurs only under certain conditions, this does not occur always because colloids as we have mentioned organic carbon has both organic and inorganic uh, groups and they is very likely what may happen is it may come re get released from the lower uh, part and come and absorb again on the top layer somewhere okay. So, but this can happen. So, if you want to add this into your transport model you have to assume that there is certain amount of concentration of colloids in the you have to model colloids as a separate phase. And as a separate entity and that is moving through okay. So, the concentration of A the chemical associated with the colloid is different from the concentration of A in the pore water itself. So, so we would not go into the details of modeling that that is but that is something that people have worked out. So, uh, so this is sediment transport is fairly uh, uh, complex because there are a lot of things that are happening in sediment and each problem with sediments again is sediments at different locations are very different. If you look at sediments in uh, coastal regions along sea coast, there is no very little organic carbon, it is all mostly sandy. If somebody dumps in India a large number of industries are located on the coast, if somebody dumps a waste, it is going to sit on these in the sand, it's mostly sandy, it is going to go down it does not adsorb, there is no adsorption in organic layer, it is sitting as pure chemical, dissolutions are very different, profiles are very different from if it is in a river or a lake which has a lot of organic carbon okay, and a lot of clay which affects its fate and transport into the sediment as well as its release from the sediment later on. Okay. So, these are all uh, uh, very complex issues related to the, the biogeochemistry of the region. Okay. Addition to this, we uh, will just uh, so, in the as we have already looked at it, so if you look at the general process, we have now done d a by r rho square rho a 2 by rho z square, this is diffusion, I can add advection I can add reaction this is a biological reaction or some reaction that is taking place. So, the reaction also will have this RA3 to term come here, this is rho A2, so on. So, other things you can have a few other things, whatever is happening here, evaporation may be happening, lot of things. So, in sediments this is, there is no evaporation, sediments this is what it is. So, you can write this entire equation, you can write it in three dimensions if you want, you can write it in whatever dimension you want, the equations become big 
and you can then solve it happily using whatever technique you know. I am not going to discuss it here. That is a mathematical problem at that point. You have to find out whatever mathematical tools are available. A lot of times when, when you get into the systems where in the natural system I mentioned that uh, rho a 2 0 is a function of height, it is not uniform. That itself will make it impossible for you to do analytical solutions to this. You have to do it numerically. Numerical solutions are the only way possible. In addition to this, R a 3 2 is also a function of height, d a 3 2 will also be a function of height. Uh, assuming that there is not function of time, so it is function of height is fine, function of time is another problem. But typically function of time we do not consider that much because the, the process is so uh, slow, we are predicting it for a long period of time. So, we will do some simple examples uh, uh, from the problem sheet, I will give it uh, next week to see how what you get, simple models, what kind of data can you get out of it and how do you interpret the data and uh, work on it.